configuring signal glows. Here we have six signals. The first three are bulb for aspect and the second three on this stretcher track are LED for aspect. Forgive the slightly dark screen, we're doing an a, a early evening scenario so we can show off the glows a little bit more. Now, first thing I want to show you is that bulb signals, as in the real world, have slightly less glow than LED signals. So here is an L a bulb signal, and there's the glow outlined by the mouse there. And hopefully you can see that the LED one is slightly brighter and slightly bigger. So that's the first difference between bulb and LEDs. All main aspect signals have glows, including the feather indicators giving off a white glow. They will also on flashing signals. The, when you get a flashing sequence, the uh, glows will flash on off at the same time. Ground position lights have much smaller glows as well, so everything that should have glows does do so. However, there might be situations where you have lots of signals very close to each other. So you have six tracks with a gantry over the top, and so you've got six signals all next to each other. And the additive effect of six signals and their glows might be too much. Now at the moment, all aspects are illuminated because we're not actually playing the scenario. So you can see that the additive effect can be quite strong from four lights all shining there. But fortunately, the signals allow you to configure the amount of glow that is put out. By default, all signals use the high setting, but there's two other settings, medium and low. The high setting um, is fine for areas where you just have one, two, or maybe even three signals, but ideally just one or two signals in close proximity. The medium setting is good for where you've got maybe three or four signals all near each other and the glows are adding into each other. And finally, the low setting is good for five or more signals near each other. Really cuts down on the glow, so the additive effect is not uh, quite so noticeable. So let's double click the first signal. We're going to assign this a low. To make the glow low, all we have to do is put a underscore anywhere in either of these two fields for the signal ID. I'm actually going to put two underscores. I'm going to go underscore L underscore number one. The reason for putting two underscores in is the underscore will appear as a blank space on the signal plate. So to keep the L lined up at the top where the two is, we use two underscores to give appropriate spacing. You can have a maximum of four characters in each of these fields. So the second signal, let's put it as a medium glow. So we'll go dash L dash two. Again, the dash does medium. So underscore, so the lowest underscore in terms of horizontal lines, an underscore is at the bottom, so that's the low glow. A dash is at the middle, so that's a medium glow. And high glow is the default. So providing it doesn't contain an underscore or a dash, it will remain on the high glow value. So that's our three bulb. Now we've got our three LED signals. So again, we're going to get start with underscore L underscore four. Now we'll use hyphens. Hyphen L hyphen five. Finally, we'll just put in a signal ID here of L6. Now the glows do not change until you save uh, the scenario, uh, save the route, exit, and then press play to actually drive it. So let's uh, get a quick scenario put in here. We're going to drive down and see how it affects the train as we pass along. So here we have our scenario. I've moved the time on slightly to make it even darker so that hopefully you can see the glows more effectively. So here we have a bulb signal with the green aspect and we've just got a low glow so you can just see a little bit of reflection there on the side of the train. Also very slightly the front of the train is being illuminated as well. So I'll position the camera so you can see the glows on the side of the train and we're going to proceed down the line now, go past the low bulb which is what we're just up to now. Hand back slightly and hopefully we'll see change to red a bit as well. Couldn't really see that because it was already past the train. So now we're approaching the medium bulb. So you're just starting to pick out the glow now. 
and now it is slightly brighter than the first and now we're approaching the high ball point so already quite far off and it was picking out and you can see it's brighter again than the previous two it is meant to be a subtle difference uh, we want this effect to be just about noticeable but uh, particularly uh, when you've got lots of additive or cumulative effects on lots of signals we don't want it to be overpowering so here again we've got the low LED and then we're now approaching the medium LED the glow is starting to come on now again the LED signals have a, um, a higher in real life they are much brighter um, at night time they're actually quite blinding for drivers um, so the glow is uh, a lot more off these and here we come up to the high glow LED again it's picking up on the train already there we go so what I want to do now is just quickly drive um, backwards and show you what you see actually are in the cab of the trains as you go past the signals. So let's quickly do that. Off we go, you just get a moment to get going. As I say, if you look as we pass the signal on the left, it's going to come past in a moment. There we go. So you can see look at the back there we can see a glow on the back so it does illuminate inside the cab but also you need to notice that there's no shadows due to the massive performance hit that shadows uh, enabling shadow uh, casting lights has uh, we haven't enabled the shadows on the glows um, if you just look at this I know it's a, our demo route so there's a lot of signals but in a real world real route that you're creating the um, number of signals you might have in a small area and if they were all casting shadows would grind uh, the vast majority of people's computers to a halt um, so unfortunately the signals do not have shadow casting enabled okay thanks for watching